and welcome to another edition of Studio Series uh, with myself, Dan Snyder, and also with Master Crafter uh, Jim Linnell, who I'll hear in a little bit. Uh, we've got a really great video lined up for you all today. Uh, we're going to touch on some um, uh, German leather workers. Um, we got a few notable names there, but Germany has a rich history of leather craft, and so we thought it would be a good topic to touch on a little bit more. So uh, I'll intro I'll turn it over. Thanks for joining us. Hey, how are you doing? I'm uh, glad to I'm be doing, here. Doing okay. <laughs> well, good, good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to sharing a little bit about um, some of the things that I've um, learned about, well, leather in Europe in general, but uh, Germany in particular. I've got a number of pieces that I want to share with folks this, today that uh, um, give them an idea of some of the kind of work that's coming out of there and maybe some of the artists that they may or may not have ever heard of, but I'd like to show them, you know, kind of the stuff that they're doing. And yeah, they, they, they love leather work um, very much over there. It's, uh, it's probably growing as fast there as it is anywhere. Um, and uh, I know that there's, uh, I, I have some friends that are pretty actively over there teaching classes on a regular basis, uh, helping to keep that, that growth going. So um, cool. Yeah, yeah I, I know that the, just kind of doing a little brief history, uh, just overview of, of Germany, uh, you know, they're very industrious. They've always been very industrious. Um, you know, German engineering is 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 pinnacle of engineering, uh, some may say. And uh, leatherworking, from the ones that I've seen, leather, the leather workers over there, you know, definitely uh, go above and beyond that standard. Um, from, you know, they had a, a very prominent uh, leather workers guild back before World War II uh, for, you know, over 100 years and then, um, or almost 100 years. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool to see uh, just, just kind of lips coming from that, that part of the country. So, um, so what do you got to show us? Um, well, let's take a look. Um, here's, here's uh, first one. This is a, a piece done by my friend Jurgen Volbach. He, uh, uh, in fact, I think two years ago, three years ago, he was the Al Stolman Award winner. And uh, he's actually taught some classes uh, for me here at Elk Track Studio. And he has, uh, um, I think, taught for the last couple of years up at the, the Leather Show in Sheridan. But this is kind of a classic example of, of some European um, scroll work. I mean, you can see that um, what he does, he relies quite heavily on um, using a, a modeling tool um, when he does his shading and, and a lot of those contours and such. And that particular piece, it doesn't really show it in that, that picture there, but that, that uh, cat is uh, embossed a little bit and so is the mouse and that tail is an, <laughs> that's hanging down there is actually an extra piece of leather that's stuck on there. It's just kind of a whimsical piece, but it's kind of cool, um, kind of a cool piece. Yeah, and, and actually, that's I, I got I got the chance to sit down with your Jurgen um, in our fourth issue, um, and it was really neat to see that kind of whimsical new new school versus old traditional old school stuff that he blends together in a lot of his pieces, and you can see that definitely here. Yeah, it it is, and you'll see that in, in his other works um, that we'll show you as well. Okay. Well, there's a, another piece <laughs> that he just recently uh, has started exploring with. Uh, yes, that's uh, what is it, Keith Richards. Um, yeah, and, uh, that's right. that, yeah, that's Keith Richards. And and yes, that's as good as he looks. Um, he, uh, <laughs> his, I think um, the, this leather, is, the leather makes his, it's, it's pretty... Uh, pretty realistic as far as the way yeah, it looks now. But. It's, it's, it's the right <laughs> canvas to do him on. <laughs> um, this is actually done mostly with a, a, um, a burning tool. This is pyrography. Um, most of what you see oh, there, yeah. the different shades of browns and, and such is all done with a wood burning tool, like you would do wood burning. Um, and so um, I think there's obviously a little bit of color added with the whites and, and, and such, but minimal like that. This piece is slightly embossed um, a little bit, uh, but again, the, the color, the detail, all the fine lines, everything that you're seeing there was all done um, with a wood burning tool, with a um, doing what was called pyrography. And it's, uh, it's really a, yeah. an amazing piece. And the realism, like you said, is just unbelievable. So 
you know, a quick question about the, the wood burning aspect of it. Um, you know, that's been around, like just wood burning biography has been around for probably as long as leatherworking has been. Um, what do you, do you see a lot more of those, those different, you know, tooling versus biography kind of blended together now? Are, are you seeing a little bit more of that well, now or? Not too much yet because I, I think this takes maybe a little bit more um, artistic ability. You have to kind of know a little bit about sketching. If you could sit with a pencil and, and sketch something like this out and create the shadows and so forth. Well, that's essentially what you're doing with the wood burning tool. You know, this is actually the, the high tech version of this is using lasers <laughs> um, because that's exactly what a laser does is it, yeah, if you want dark lines, it, it burns a little harder. If you want lighter, it runs over much quicker. Um, but that's how you get the varying shades and such. They can do um, wonderful portraits with a, a laser because of that same thing. Well, that what allows that to happen is leather. The leather is the, is the unique uh, ingredient here that, that lets you regulate um, and get these different tones and so forth, depending on how much heat is applied um, as you're doing that. Doing it by hand obviously takes some skill, but you have to be kind of sure-handed there. You, can you imagine how many strands of hair that is on his head? You know, that's, that's just a, yeah. an amazing piece of work there. Um, and then just a touch yeah. of color bring out the depth and the detail. It's just, it's an amazing piece. Yeah, it looks incredible. I, I've tried some pyrography with uh, uh, some wood burning and uh, I'm really good with, with lines, but not so much with the shading. It's really easy. Um, it's a lot less forgiving than tooling is. Um, you know, tooling, you can use uh, antiques or, or neat's foot oil or, or something to kind of blend your mistakes in. But with, with pyrography, it's... Uh, um, yeah, there's one shot at it. That's it. That yeah, that's right. Okay. So, kind of, so you know, if somebody wanted to do this, I'd recommend they sit down with a pencil for a while and do some sketches like this. Learn how to bring out the chat yeah. and yeah. such like that, um, and then you know, you would do that again with the wood burning device. But you would do that by applying different temperatures, or also by how much pressure you put on it as well, so that you don't um, you don't burn something before you want it to. You know. You can't can't lighten it yeah, up. Definitely. So right, yeah, it's one of those things where you have to do a couple times on paper, and then, like you said, before you move on to the, the actual thing. So wow. Wow. that is a really nice piece. Very good. Um, this is another one. Oh. I I think if if uh, that was also done by Jurgen, uh, if you uh, were uh, our subscriber to the Leather Crafters and Saddlers Journal, you probably saw something similar to this on the cover a while back, a couple of years ago. Uh, this is uh, a koi fish, and and uh, on this one, again, that uh, fish is uh, embossed out. Um, the, the lily, no, yeah, the little flower there anyway, it's slightly being embossed out, but um, but yes, that's uh, uh, another piece that that he did, and, and uh, very simple. It has a, a very, uh, a little bit of an Asian sort of a flavor to it, um, but it, it really is a, a neat piece of, of leather work. So, you know, you, he does a lot of embossing, and um, I, I think that's really neat. I've never tried, um, you know, my hand at embossing. Uh, the, 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 the fastest thing I got to was this little leaf, or this a feather, I'm sorry, that uh, was one of your patterns. Um, that I that I tried, you know, to make it realistic when uh, when you came to, to visit. Um, but I've always been fascinated with how um, you know I've seen some of your pieces as well that are embossed. Uh, the, the bear uh, comes to mind. But when um, what is the like <clears throat> how I, I, I guess how do you do it? How how does the embossing technique work? Uh, I know there's well, stuff like there's embossing and there's embossing like different products you can use to help with that so right it's uh well obviously the embossing itself is is basically the stretching out of the leather causing the leather to stretch in particular areas so like in this case here the fish would be stretched from the underside to create a cavity there um and so but then what do you fill that with is the question you're asking and there's a couple of different ways to do that um uh, if you were old, old school and, and got a hold of the, the book that Al Stolman did back when, he did what we call plug embossing, where he would take and sculpture 
pieces of leather to fill that with a something that would fill that cavity, but it'd be, you know, maybe a couple of layers of leather then sculpted to um, be basically that shape. Uh, a much more friendly way to do it is uh, uh, using the, the leather dust and some rubber cement. And I know uh, Springfield Leather, I believe, still sells the, the leather dust. It's That's kind of the hard thing for people to find sometimes. But but that mixed up with rubber cement to about the consistency of, of cookie dough uh, is what I use to, to fill those kinds of things in. And uh, it, it works really well because it's somewhat maneuverable. You do a lot of the detail work then after that's filled in. Uh, believe it or not, we just uh, at LTRAC Studio, the, the very most recent uh, online class we did was the basics of embossing where we used exactly that stuff, um, wow. the, yeah. uh, the putty and it, we did a horse's head, but we went through the whole process, um, you know, from tracing it on to cutting it, to embossing it, filling it, and then bringing out all the details and such. So um, if somebody wants to see a, it's about a two hour video, but if somebody wants to see how that's done, that's a great introduction to that process. And like I said, I think Springfield Leather carries the, all of the stuff that I use to, uh, uh, to do that filling but on that. I, I did see that uh, some of the end products of, of that class on some of the, the social media sites um, and they looked phenomenal. Um, th that was very impressive. And I was, um, very just, I, I sat there and looked at them, and um, I think it's really neat that you can use. I, I think it's really interesting that something as small as leather dust can be used when you're working with leather, which is a product that comes from a byproduct of an animal from the meatpacking industry. So that really, really all kind of it all kind of encapsulates, um, you know, use every bit. When people uh, look at some of these things that I've done where I've done that embossing, uh, quite often people say, oh, my gosh, how thick was that leather when you started out? You know, they're thinking that I must have started out with some really heavy piece of leather and just beat the fire out of it. Um, but that's not what it's meant. In fact, the piece that people will see if, if they go to that, get that video, the, I think I used a piece of four ounce leather. It's actually pretty thin, but I've got it standing up maybe uh half three quarters of an inch off of the surface of the leather um and it it's just uh, amazing um but um yeah maybe in a, in a future uh future one of these visits we can we can get into the details of how that's done okay. and show you more okay. about that sure well, let's let's check out some more of uh, uh some some german leather craft okay that one right there that one's an amazing piece um i I, in fact, I happen to have it here with me because it's well, it was portable and I brought it over. This is actually a, uh, a German Bible. My Again, this is a piece of leather work from my buddy um, Jürgen Volbach. He um, knows that I'm a Lutheran. OK, and so uh, two years ago when the uh, they had the leather show down in Waco, Texas, he was here and he did some classes there. But I wasn't able to be there. I had already booked uh, some vacation. I was off in Montana doing some fishing or something. And um, anyway, uh, so he he uh, left this for me. He said, here, this is for Jim and and gave to me. And and so I, when I got it, I had to, I looked at it. I said, oh, my gosh, look at this. This is just like an amazing piece of leather work. Um, and I'll tell you something about how that background is done, too, in a minute. But uh, when I opened it up, here's what blew me away. I, when I opened it up, this is actually a Martin Luther Bible. Okay. You see that? It's, wow. it's actually wow. done by Martin Luther. And if you look here, can you see the, the publication date there? 1819. And I'm saying, yeah, oh, my wow. God. oh, my gosh, what have I got here? You know, I'm just blown away by that. And when I asked him about it, he says, oh, yeah, those are you can you can find those in the secondhand stores over here. You know, they're they're not that uncommon. <laughs> yeah. For somebody like me, it's like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. The thing I like about that, and if you want to put that that shit, yeah, that shot back up there. Um, what I like about that, and what intrigues a lot of people, is that background texture that he is. And when, in fact, um, I saw him, I, he was posting pictures of this out on Facebook when he was making this, and I, I'm saying, oh my gosh! I, it, he said that he had made all of those background tool uh, cedars, and I said, what would it take for me to get a set of those? He said, well, I'll bring you some. And I, so anyway, what I've got right here is a set of seed tools that were made by Jürgen Volbeck. And his oh, tool, wow. again, I don't know if you can see it, but one of the things that makes these different than a cedar tool that you might find really anywhere uh, is that they are shallower. They're not as deeply ground as 
um, the kind that we would use in regular floral carving. And, and thus they produce a nice domed shape on the top of each one of those round dots in there. Um, and the th walls on these are very thin. They are almost uh, like a like you'd find on a on a punch. They have that kind of a sharp right. edge on them. So that's what's actually used to create this that that texture. And I've used these cuff lines. It really is neat. And people ask about that all the time. But uh, what I, I I like about it is that um, it's it's simple. Um, what you do is you take the biggest one and just kind of randomly put those around in a background area. Then you take the next size and right. randomly randomly use that and you know and then you eventually work down to the very smallest to fill in the gaps that you left and so it actually comes out pretty pretty neat um and and it looks great at, and uh, i get a lot of people asking about how did you do that well and you can get other seeds. i think his first set of these cedar tools like this that he made i think he took some regular ones and he just modified them and yes that's yeah. legal you can do that <laughs> well that's the that's the cool thing, um, you know. There, there's such a ingenuity that's that surrounds tooling, and I, I always thought it was very fascinating. Like I've used, um, uh, just my own, like you know, I just get round stock steel and just play with the Dremel on it and try to find a pattern that I like. Uh, I've made a lot of a lot of cool backgrounders like that, and I think that that just encapsulates and shows and showcases the the ability that you know if you have an idea there's a tool that you can make that'll make that happen when it comes to tooling yeah so that's really cool. yeah wow mm -hmm.